Next we have Jeff Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald is certainly used to being in the thick of the action, having served as Speaker of the Wisconsin State Assembly during this last legislative session. In his role as Speaker, Jeff has been on the front line advocating for concealed carry, Act 10, the mining bill. That being the case, he's used to receiving a loud welcome in Madison, so let's all give him a loud and friendly lacrosse welcome. Speaker Jeff Fitzgerald. Good evening, everybody. I do see the gentleman in the back with the five minutes. I first want to start off by congratulating Mike Hibbs, who I was Mike Majority Leader when he was Speaker, and congratulations on an award. I'll tell you, Mike Hibbs has been the conservative leader in western Wisconsin since when? About 1994, right, Mike? He deserves a big round of applause. I was recruiting candidates that I thought could make a difference, that would really stand up and say, you know what, the status quo is no longer acceptable. We needed to pick up four seats and take the majority back. We picked up 14 seats, thanks to folks like you that were out there saying, you know what, enough's enough. We need to take this state in a different direction. And I do like to rattle off what we've accomplished in just one year. We balanced a $3.6 billion deficit that people told us we couldn't do in one session, and we did it without raising taxes. In that budget, we put a permanent property tax freeze in. We also took on the trial attorneys that Jim Doyle had giveaways for years and passed the largest tort reform in the entire country. We did this thing where we wanted to have fair elections, it's called photo identification. <laughs> yeah. You're to strengthen your Second Amendment rights. So we passed this little thing called conceal and carry. <laughs> we wanted you to be able to protect yourself in your own home. So we passed something called the Castle Doctrine. <laughs> and I'll tell you. People ask me all the time, Jeff, you're, you're Speaker of the House, uh, you could be there for a long time, the Assembly's going to be in the majority, why do you want to run for the United States Senate? And a lot of people don't know this, but I am the younger brother, the much taller one, so. Uh, <laughs> but I have to give up my seat. I have to give up being Speaker, I have to give up my Assembly seat. It's that important to me. Because I got into politics because I thought this state was headed in the wrong direction. And now I know our country's heading in the wrong direction. The problems we face in Wisconsin are what we face on a national level. We have to compete in a global market. We need to get people back to work. We need to start making products in this country again. Next, like we had to get our fiscal deficit in order in Wisconsin, we have to do it on a national level. $15 trillion in debt, more than our entire GDP. So we have to get that all together, move this country in the right direction, the same way we move the state. I won't bore you on the details, the governor did a great job of, of how we did that, but I do like to leave you with two stories, and it's what kind of inspired me to say, you know what, I'm going to try and run for the United States Senate, and the reason why I want to do it. Two stories. I was in Atlanta about three months ago, trying to get my connecting flight, and I was just standing there, not paying attention to anything, waiting for my connecting flight, and somebody tapped me on the shoulder. And I turned around very quickly, because these days I turn around really quickly. <laughs> and a gentleman stuck out his hand and he said, Mr. Fitzgerald, I want to thank you for what you've done. And I said, oh, thank you. I appreciate the support. It's good to hear from people that, that are supporting us. And I said, what part of the state are you from in Wisconsin? He said, I'm not from Wisconsin. But I want you to know, the entire country is watching you. You have restored my faith and that things can be different and things can change. And that struck me. That struck me. That's what we need out in Washington, D.C. As the governor said, we need people with political courage. I'm gonna leave you with this last story. It's my favorite story of, of what happened this entire year. It was the day we were gonna take up the collective bargaining bill. The Senate was gonna go first. And I was sitting at my desk and I heard, 
my staff says to me, your brother's on the phone. So I picked up the phone, I said, what's going on? He said, I think the Democrats just left the state. I said, what? He said, I think the Democrats really just fled the state. I said, call me back. He's like, yeah, they fled the state, they're not here. I said, well, you know what? We'll have to take up the bill first. Now in the meantime, 30,000 of our closest friends had assembled around the Capitol. And we caucus up on the fourth floor of the Capitol. And I had to get my members up to our caucus. And I'll tell you, I had to walk a gauntlet. And we had security kind of line the hallway to get us up there. And the things that were said to us, the obscenities, they tried to spit on us. They were knocking our staff over. Now remember, we were all under death threats. I had threats that they not only wanted to kill me, they wanted to kill my children. And I remember thinking to myself, is this Wisconsin? Is this what Wisconsin's about? Because we asked public employees to pay more towards their pension and their health care. And we got in that caucus and we came back out on the floor. And about an hour into debate, Capitol Security called me and said, Mr. Speaker, we've lost control of the state capitol. We can no longer guarantee the safety of you or any of your members. And I said, well, I'll have to recess the session. And we took everybody out through the tunnels, we got them to safety, and I was sitting in my office alone. And I remember thinking to myself, if there's any semblance of what's going on around the state capitals going back home in our districts, I will never get the votes for this bill. And went home for the weekend. And we came back, and this is where I want to thank people like you. Because we went back to our districts, and you know what we heard? You know what? You're doing the right thing. This is what we sent you to do. This is why we elected you. Stay the course. And member after member got up and said that. And we went out back onto that floor. And for 63 straight hours, with no sleep, passed a bill that fundamentally will change the course of Wisconsin for generations. I will, I will close with this. I'm not the most well-known Senate candidate that's running for this U.S. Senate seat. I won't be the, the biggest finance, but I'll tell you, if you're looking for somebody to just go out to Washington, D.C. and have the title of U.S. Senator, I'm not your guy. But if you're looking for somebody who's going to go out there and fight for you, like I have for the past year and a half, then I need your support. I need your support. But thank you for all you've done, because you are the heart and soul of conservatives in this state. So God bless you. God bless America.